Hello everybody, and today we'll be going over dynamic games with incomplete information, part two. So, like I mentioned in our last video, this video will cover signaling games. We'll be going over a very basic form of signaling games, which have two players, two types, and two actions. So, here's an example of a signaling game. We start off with nature. Nature will either draw a type, good or bad with probability choosing good as p, bad as one minus p. Then player one will choose a or b. Based on that option, player two will choose x or y, and the outcome will be revealed. So player one, the first player that goes, has the information. They are not in the dark. They observe their type, and they know what their nature has made them good, or bad, which influences whether they choose A or B. Player two, on the other hand, is in the dark. They do not know nature's decision. They have not seen whether player one is good or bad, but they do have the knowledge of what choice player one made, and they can use that knowledge to influence whether they will choose X or Y, because now they have a belief of whether player one is good or bad. There are three different types of PBE in signaling games. There are separating equilibrium, pooling equilibrium, and semi-separating slash partially pooling equilibrium. We'll give, I'll give a brief overview of each of these three strategies. So the first strategy is separating strategy. This is what a separating strategy looks like. Here you can see that if player one was made good by nature, they will choose option A. If player one was made bad by nature, they will choose option B. This makes it very easy for player two because if player two observes player one choosing option A, then they automatically know player one was good. On the other hand, if player two observes player one, choosing B, then they automatically know player two was bad. So this one is fairly simple for player two in this overview example. The next strategy is a pooling strategy. Here, you can see if player one was made good by nature, they'll choose B. If player one was made bad by nature, they'll also choose B. In this example, player two isn't actually gaining any information. So it may not seem as helpful, but it's still a strategy used and can become more helpful when we have more choices, more information about what's going on in this game. The last strategy is a semi-separating strategy. Now this is the most complicated one. It is essentially that the strategy that allows bluffing in a way. So we can see if nature made player one good, then they'll choose A. If nature made player one bad, then they'll choose A with probability one minus P2, and they'll choose B with probability P2. This means that if player two observes player one choosing option B, then they automatically know that nature made player one bad. But if player two sees player one choosing option A, they don't know if player one was good and then chose A because it was his only option, or if player one was bad and chose A because it happened to be within probability one minus P2. This is a brief overview of signaling games and the strategies used to solve signaling games. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go over how these are solved as these are all topics you should have gone over at the end of a game theory course and while i would absolutely love to cover them more in depth and do an example like this one that i've set up i currently don't have the capacity to do that hopefully soon after i take a game theory course i will come back and i'll be able to update these series and provide you guys with more information on how to actually solve each of these equilibrium and how to solve a specific signaling game question 
I really hope this was helpful and did provide you the update on the various strategies used to solve signaling games and what a signaling game is. Please let me know if you have any questions or have any resources you think I should look at. Thank you so much.